now that we know where our satellites are going to be and what our accuracy is going to be and if there's any kind of bad times to, to be uh, worried about collecting data, we can get ready to actually take our data model and check it out so that we can uh, put it onto a mobile device. So to do that, we're going to do this all on ArcMap. Go ahead and open ArcMap. And now the rest of the, this uh, video is going to assume that you have uh, ArcPad installed on your computer and your mobile device. Uh, generally when you install ArcPad it automatically installs it on your computer and then it'll ask you if, it want, if you want to install it on your mobile device. So we're going to assume that you have ArcPad 8 or 10 and for this demo we're going to be using ArcPad 10. Okay, so when the Getting Started window opens, uh, we can just go to uh, the My Templates thing here. If you're using ArcPad 9 or ArcGIS 9, excuse me, uh, you'll just want to open with a blank map. And our uh, ArcGIS 10, select My Templates, click on Blank Map, hit OK. And now I'm going to keep this editor window or toolbar open, and I'm just going to dock it up here to get it out of the way. Let's see. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is let's add our aerial photo in that we downloaded with our lesson data. So click on Add Data. And who knows where it takes you here, but essentially from the drop down, click on our folder connection, Lesson 4, and we're going to load the East Asian Section 2009 photo. And this is an area that I defined uh, that's as our East Asian collection, our section of the Arboretum, and I want to go out and collect some data in this area. So have an aerial photo of your entire garden, uh, it's best to zoom in to the area that you're going to collect data in uh, just for that day so that you create a small photo that'll, that'll open up and, uh, and read well on a mobile device. A big photo uh, will cause your device to, to have a lot of problems, so it's always a good idea to just zoom in to the section you're going to work at and then when we check out data, the, the checkout tools will automatically clip down a photo if you have a larger one. Uh, for the purpose of this lesson, I did it ahead of time to uh, make the file download quick. Okay, so we have our aerial photo here, and uh, first thing we have to figure out is like, what are we going to collect once we're out there? Um, and I just want to go out there and collect some plant data, which is the most common data for gardens to go out there and collect. Um, other things may include uh, you may want to go out and map your pathways or utilities or things like that. Um, but uh, for the purpose of this exercise, we're just going to do plant data. So click on the Add Data button here. And when this window comes up, you can go to your folder connection uh, and click on that. Go into Lesson 4 and then go into the UC Davis Arboretum 0 0.19 uh, geodatabase into the Base Map Feature Data Set. And scroll over uh, to the M's and select mass planting. And then scroll over so you see plant center, hit the control key and hit plant center. You should see mass planting, uh, semicolon plant center at the bottom here. And click add and it'll add both of those feature classes into our ArcMap document. Okay. So there's not much we need to do to these. We've already assigned the domains uh, in our catalog so that we can have drop-down lists when we're out there. So we're pretty much ready to go. And to get our data on our mobile device, we're going to use the ArcPad Data Manager. And to do that, you're going to get or access that, you're going to want to go to the Customize menu here and click on Extensions. And under Extensions, turn on the ArcPad Data Manager and then hit Close. And then we can go to the Customize menu again and turn on the ArcPad Data Manager toolbar. So go to Toolbars and oops, select ArcPad Data Manager. And from this toolbar, basically it has a few buttons on it for us to be able to access the data and get it out to ArcPad. So basically we're going to use this one that says Get Data for ArcPad. And check on that. It tells you a little bit about what this wizard does. You can get rid of this screen, but I recommend read, reading it for the first time before you get rid of it. We're going to skip that and go ahead and hit Next. And now it's asking us what data do we want to put on our mobile device. Now, since I only have these three layers loaded into ArcMap, uh, it's pretty simple for us to deal with. 
I always like to think about the uh, the photo first, and uh, it, right now it says do not export. We're going to change that option to export as background TIFF, and it gives you two different options for what format the file is going to be in. JPEGs tend to be a little bit smaller and maybe a little easier on mobile devices, but the last time I tried a JPEG, it didn't show up correctly. So just for errors um, and reducing them, we're going to go ahead and export background as TIFF. Basically, it says we're going to have our background image uh, on the mobile device in a TIFF format. Now, these two layers at the top here, we're going to want to collect data about. ArcPad supports what's called related tables now, and if I extend this or expand this related, or excuse me, the layer field here, the layer column, it shows that it's going to check out plant centers plus this related table called plant common name, which has a one-to-one -one relationship in it. And you don't need to know a lot about that, um, except for the fact that basically if you want to add common names uh, for any plants while you're out there, the table that we're storing common names in and the data model is going to go out there with you. So uh, you could add those if you want, but essentially, you know, that's something that can be easily done in the office and is not a good use of, of uh, time out in the field. So I wouldn't worry about that too much at this point. Okay, so we need to get these uh, plant center and mass planting layers ready to go out in the field with us. So we need to change the action on these to, uh, to export these. So you click on action for plant center, and we want to check them out for disconnected editing in ArcPad. And then it asks you, once you put your mouse pointer over that, do you want it based on a defined extent or schema only? And we want it to be a blank, empty database out there. Any data that we may have in there, we don't want to take that out with us because we, we're collecting data uh, for the first time out here. So I'm going to click on schema only. Now, if you do want to go out there and take any data that you previously collected, if you have a group of plants that you have data on and you want to go out there and you need to add a couple more to it, you would want to click on the other option, which is data based on defined extent. And that will just basically check out any point, plant points that you have within the scope of where we're zoomed in. But as I mentioned, since we're going out there for the first time collecting new data, uh, we don't have anything. We're going to go with schema only, which is a blank data set. Okay, so both mass plantings and plant centers have check out schema only. Our aerial photograph has background TIFF selected. We'll click next. And now it has an option here uh, for selecting some fields to store pictures. The data model is not currently set up to have a field to store pictures in it, um, but if you wanted to create one of those, it'd be really easy to go into each one of these feature classes, uh, plant center and mass planting, and add a field in there so that when you're out there uh, collecting data, if you have a camera on your data collector, uh, as is getting more and more common these days, when you're collecting your location for that feature, you can additionally take a picture of it and it will store that picture uh, in the geodatabase for you. So as I mentioned, we don't have that functionality set up in the data model right now, so we're just going to click next and, and move forward. Okay, so now it asks you uh, some information about the files that we're going to check out here. So it asks, uh, what's the name of the folder that you want to store the data in? And now, I think a good practice on this is to use uh, a date and the name of the area you're going to collect data in. So I like to store my dates kind of in uh, backwards format, if you will. Uh, essentially, the year first, and then the month, and I believe today is the, the 26th of July, so I'm going to type that in there. And then I like to follow that with the uh, name of the area that we're going to collect data in, and that's the East Asian section. So that way I know that uh, this folder, when I f go to look for it on my hard drive later, I know exactly what data I, I collected data on and I know where I collected that data. So that the file names can be really useful for that. Then it asks you where do you want this folder to be stored. I'm going to hit the folder icon here. And I'm going to store it in the same folder as we've been working in, which is always a really good idea uh, to keep all of your information there. So I'm going to go to my C. Uh, GIS folder, UC Davis Arboretum folder, and Lesson 4. And hit OK. And then it asks you what do you want to name the map. It has a default name in here because we haven't saved our map document yet. But I also recommend doing uh, naming this the same as uh, the folder. And that way it's really clear what this document contains. Okay. 
and then go ahead and hit next. And now this is a, a, a neat little feature that they've added to ArcPad is that it can automatically copy the data to your mobile device for you. So this is a good point to make sure that you have your mobile device connected to your computer, um, usually through USB or other cable, uh, and that it's turned on. And now if we click on this create ready to deploy CAB file containing the ArcPad data, it will automatically put it on the mobile device for me when I'm done. So I'm going to click finish. And right now it's going through and it's going to clip down any data for us uh, if our photo was bigger. And it's going to get those files ready for uh, checking out. So now it gives you a little summary here and it tells you where it put the save the, uh, the checkout for you, the name of it, uh, the uh, projection that we assigned uh, in lesson two is already right there. Uh, the number of layers we checked out. It checked out two features la feature layers. That's our uh, plant center and mass planning feature classes. And it checked out one image layer. That's our background photo. And the rest of the stuff we didn't really do except for the very bottom one here where we created a deployable CAB file. And yes, that succeeded. So we hit OK. And now it asks if you want to put that CAB file onto our uh, mobile device. So I'm going to hit yes. And then it says, oh, you already have one of these installed on there. Um, it's because I tested this out before we did this video. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit yes to replace. You probably won't get this message, so it'll probably just skip to the screen and do it automatically for you. And this is a really neat feature. Instead of having to manually go to the sp spot that you saved the, uh, the checkout and then copy it to the device. And then it asks if there's any, uh, ch check your mobile device to see if there's any additional steps yes necessary. And you can't see my mobile device screen right now, but basically it asks, do you want to put this on there? It's from an unknown publisher, so I'm going to hit yes. And then there's a previous version that's going to be removed. I'm going to hit OK. And then it's going to go through and ask, where do you want to save this? Do you want to save it on the device or on the uh, memory card installed? I'm just going to put it on the device and then it'll go through and do it. And now these steps could be different depending on the version of Windows Mobile that you have uh, on your mobile device. But we'll look a little bit closer at the uh, mobile device and some of the steps involved with using it uh, in our next lesson. And then my mobile device says that it was successfully installed. I hit OK. And now that I'm done with this, I'm going to hit OK here and we're all done. So that's going to pretty much conclude the getting ready to collect data. Um, and our next steps are going to be to, to take this uh, out in the field and actually collect some data. So let's see, to get ready to close here, I'm going to leave my ArcPad Data Manager toolbar open. I'm going to close mm -hmm. ArcMap, ask me if I want to save changes. Sure. Save changes and we'll call that Lesson 4. So navigate to the Lesson 4 folder that we've created. And once you get in there, you can title it Lesson 4, hit Save, and we're all set. Okay, so that concludes Lesson 4. So today we learned how to prepare and collect field data using the ArcGIS Public Gardens data model. Next time, we're going to prepare to collect data out in the field and learn how to set up our GPS equipment. We'll see you out there next time.